Joining me now on Telecom TV is Tom Nadeau, Director of NFE Software Engineering at Red Hat. Tom, we've been talking at ONS Europe this week about compliance verification. How can we use this to jumpstart open source deployments? Yeah, I think one of the things that came out of the panel that was interesting was, um, and, and some of the presentations before, was a, was a realization that um, you need operators and you need vendors to sort of play ball um, in the right way. Uh, and, and the reason why it's so important is because we have, um, the, the way open source works today is that there's so many little pieces that need to be integrated and put together that it's, it's an integration challenge. And what does that mean? That means there's a testing challenge. And therefore, this is why all the testing things and compliance things we're talking about here are uh, so important. There's a belief here at ONS Europe that we can improve the process if we can centralize much of this verification work, leaving the last remaining few percent to individual operators. Yeah, and that's the, I mean, that's, that's the kind of theme with open source too, which is let's, um, let's try to solve the common problem together and leverage that because there's, there's um, it sounds funny when you say it doesn't really have value, but the operators today said, they said our infrastructure doesn't add value per se to our situation. Our customers don't, you know, the, the, the woman from Verizon said, our infrastructure um, is something that our customers don't care about. We don't sell our infrastructure, we sell our services. And so, um, and that, that plays along into that theme, you know, and that's what Red Hat does with everybody else here. We build that common infrastructure, basically. Who should be overseeing this compliance verification work? What's the right forum for this? And should it also align with the relevant telecom standards organizations? That was actually a question that came up during the panel. Um, I, it, I, I've seen many of these efforts over the years, and they're sometimes they're operator focused, and sometimes they're vendor focused. And what ends up happening is you have a sort of a self-selecting filtering thing that happens, and what ends up happening is that the output is incomplete for the other group. And what you really need is a is a is a collective, you know, with both operators and vendors here, so that operators can provide requirements that the vendors can then um, execute on or have a discussion about, hey, can we really build this or not? You know, and so it's, it's, it's really got to be both of those camps together somewhere. There's a perception from some telcos that many open source developers, kind of like commitment phobes, they, they, they jump from project to project depending on what's hot and what's not. Is, is that a fair assessment? Um, because obviously this could be detrimental to a project's success. Yeah, it definitely does happen. Um, and it, it, as I say, it's a feature and a bug of open source, right? The people vote with their feet and their keyboards. Um, and, some, and sometimes that makes a lot of sense uh, in the sense, like you're saying, you know, there's interest in a project, so people are working on it. Um, but that, that means something different sometimes. That, uh, that could be a vendor is very interested in building that to sell it or as part of some solution. And so people are deployed on it. And we have other projects where people work on things um, even people that are in my team work on side projects, as we call them, and and those side projects are just sort of for fun or for interest, and and that's really where you get that weird thing you're describing, where people disappear sometimes from projects, and it and it has to do with either they lose interest or maybe their employer says, hey, I need you to spend more time on this, um, and and what it really comes down to is. Um, is, is just organization. You know, if you're building, if you're building a distro, you know, I built a distro for Open Daylight at my last uh, gig, and it's still used today. And it was, it was built in a pretty specific kind of way with specific customer requirements that design. You know, then that's how we built things, and we worked upstream to build certain components. Um, and I've, I saw other competing distros that have failed now um, that had a less uh, customer driven kind of mode. It was more of a, I don't want to say the hobby mode, but it was something in the middle. And it, it turns out, like you're saying, you know, where at some point people either lose interest because they're working on it in their spare time or they or they frankly change jobs. They say, I don't want to do this anymore. So it's a matter of, you know, working with the dev team and dev teams that are upstream that you're working with, I think, to uh, um, to sort that out and make sure we're all, we've all got the same goals, you know. 
So for a project that a telco is keen on, what steps can they themselves take to ensure it gets completed to their satisfaction? Yeah, we talked about this on the panel, actually, um, uh, the other day when we were talking. Um, and I guess the answer is it depends on the size of the telco service provider, because that directly governs how, the res how many resources they have. So in the case of the large telco folks, which you're seeing, like even today, there, there was um, actually a difference from AT&T and Verizon. Verizon talked about being an integrator. AT&T is squarely a developer, a DIY developer. And those are two very different things, um, requiring different kinds of resources, different kinds of developers or not, testers or integrators. And then, like you were saying, having a, a, a specific kind of relationship with your vendors um, to actually build and integrate and support for, you know, the, the telco lifespan for products is five plus years often they're deployed, right? That's the joke. Things never get... Um, backed out, you know, or uninstalled. Uh, and, and what that means is you have to have a long-term support plan in place. And this is actually where the DIY thing goes wrong sometimes because the, the developers that are at a Telco SP, um, you know, may decide they want to leave and go somewhere else. And then what happens? Then, then they have to hire contractors or an integrator or change plans. Um, whereas the other model where you're the integrator you know, you're basically buying services. And you hopefully have a plan where if you're buying a distro from vendor A, you can buy the same or very similar distro from vendor B if it doesn't work out. But so it's, it's part of having a plan, a master plan for your, for your software and your um, products. Does open source lead to an unmanageable increase in software components with many variants and solutions adopted by CSPs? And if so, do we need a kind of curated open source approach led by CSPs? Yeah, and that, and that gets back to the, the DIY versus the integrator thing I think we were talking about. Um, and I guess what you're calling curated is what I was calling well-planned, right? So it's the same kind of idea where you, you understand deeply what's going on in a project and that is part of your plan, or you rely on an integrator to do that for you. But you, somebody has to do that. For those service providers looking to commit more to open source, it's not going to be a wholesale changeover, is it? It's more likely to be a modular, piece-by-piece -piece approach? Yeah, it's a gradual change, and you're seeing this, uh, for example, the Vodafone presentation this morning that Matt gave, he actually showed what he was calling, I think, the artistic composition or something of, um, of, of different stacks of products. And, and he had one stack which has a proprietary component, a heavy pr proprietary component, and they're starting to transition to more open source components built above that. And then their sort of ultimate plan is all open source components, I think, um, which was you know in, in, in the keynote. And you're seeing that from a lot of service providers today because there's, there's just a lot of advantages to being either in more direct control, like we were saying, if you're a DIY developer, um, or if you use an integrator, or, or uh, you are the integrator, you have direct control over what the vendors um, not only are providing to you, but you can see it. And that is, um, that, is, that is a really different situation, you know, because the vendor can't say, oh, I'm gonna do it, because you can see the code. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, you can't hide that. Tom, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.